Hey folks, a while back, uh, September of 2021, actually, I wrote this little article that ended up on Enable Sysmin on how to run Podman on Windows. And it's kind of got, got a lot of good, not reviews so much, but a number of people have used it and gotten good feedback from it. So I thought that since there's been a whole lot of changes on how you can install Podman on Windows these days, that I'd go ahead and take a look at what's going on now. And so in this article, as you may recall, you had to prepare stuff for Windows first, and then you had to enable cut and paste. So that's kind of still there as well. But you had to install Fedora on Windows in order to make this run. Now, with the latest MSIs that Jason Green, who has done really phenomenal work for us, has put together for the Windows packages, you can just go ahead and install them. Now, truth be told, this is the first time I've tried doing this. So I don't know how well it's going to work. Jason tells me it's going to be great. I believe Jason. We'll, we'll see together, I guess. So the first thing to do is get onto the GitHub site for Podman, which is github.com containers.podman. And then we're gonna go to the releases. And under here, we're gonna look for the latest release, which is v4.1.0. And after scrolling, because there was a mess load of additions and changes to this particular release, we'll see the assets. Now, if we open that up, we'll see a number of Podman remotes that we can go ahead and put in. And the one that we're looking for is the Podman 410.msi. So I've not yet downloaded this, but we will now. Okay, so that's downloaded. Let's open the containing folder. Podman 410. So according to Jason, and we should just be able to click on this and have it run for us. Well, it's popped up a window and then on my other screen, which is unfortunately not on the screen that I'm currently on. And it's asking me if I really want to do this. No way, went ahead and did that. So it's gone ahead and installed. There's no WSL installations needed. This is running on Microsoft 11 on a home machine. So none of that should be necessary. So in theory, we should have Podman up and running at this point in time. So what we can do is pull up our Windows PowerShell and just try a simple command. Podman run UBA micro date, which should return the date for us. And the term Podman is not seen. Well, that's not good. No. Let's try getting into the new PowerShell. I told you this was a live demo, so I never know what's going to happen. So PowerShell, do just straight Podman at this point in time. Well, that looks a heck of a lot better, so I must not have had stuff set up there. So let's try that command again. So that's not run at all. And that is because we have not yet started the machine. So first we need to initialize the machine. So actually I'm gonna get another PowerShell up because that's a little handier for cutting and pasting. And I'm looking at a um, tutorial that Jason's put together that has all this listed in it. And I'll go ahead and share that in the YouTube video on the, in the description of that. So you'll be able to see it and get to it as well. So what we're gonna do is do a Podman, Again, this is asking me if I want to go ahead and do this. Now we'll allow access. And this will take a moment here. It always takes much longer on a demo than when you're just sitting back and having a nice cold drink.
So it's going through the installation steps now. Again, I've not done anything on this machine before, so this is all brand new to this machine. And as you've seen through my mess ups, it goes along and stumbling through this a little bit as well. So now let's try starting up the Podman machines. Before we do that, I'm going to set the machine to use Rootful, which will be a little more, um, a little more leeway, a little, perhaps a little bit less secure, but for this quick demo, I think it's fine for this. And then we're going to do Podman machine starts. So we're starting up a little VM here. And we can ignore from this that this function is not implemented in Windows. It's just a warning. So again, and, and try our command that we were trying before. Oh, and where did it go? There it is. Um, it'd be eight micro. See how things are going here. So we're going to try pulling the Ubi micro latest. This is looking a lot happier than the last time. And there's our date. Okay, great. So let's try one of my favorite ones. Let's try Podman run quay dash containers. Oops, not containers. And it's very helpful if you go ahead and actually spell it correctly. So we're going to go ahead and pull that. And there's our little hello Podman world image, which is nice too, because this also checks um, that everything is up and running relatively appropriately and that the users domain, not user domains, but that rootful and rootless users are set up so that that could work as well. So if you get to this point, you're in pretty good shape. So in this other document that I had done, one last thing that I had done was I created simple containers, but I also created a little um, website just to see if Nginx would go ahead and run. So what I've gone ahead and got, gone and done is I've created this index.html and I've created a directory podman site content and it has this information here. And now I'm going to run this command that was lifted directly from there. Let's scroll down just a little bit here. So we're going to run it. We're going to run it on 8080. And we're going to name it web. And we're going to use the site content direct. We're going to volume mount the site content into our Nginx HTML directory where it's expecting the index.html. And hopefully when it's all said and done, It'll, when it's running, it will respond back to us, hello from an Nginx container on Windows. So let's see how this goes. Oh, okay. A new thing. So not a new thing, but I um, can't do short names. So we've got to do gr. That right? Yep. Got to tell it where it's getting it from. Okay, so it's gone ahead and started running that. And if I go ahead and pull up a new window, that was too much localhost. That's right. Oh, and that's not so good. Why is that not running? Well, it's seeing that it's got an Nginx server, so something must be out of whack with my setup for that itself. So the server is up and running, the web server. 
is that the right version? But it's not seeing the index.html. So what is going on here? Let's see. I'm going to try and get a little crazy here and try running this privileged. That is the key to this. And I can still not type. Okay, we now have that up and running there. We're still forbidden. Well, not the way that I had wanted that to end. Every good demo has to have a failure somewhere, I guess. I will have to go look at that further and try it again later. And we're back again. I wasn't having some problems getting the web server up due to privileges, but rather due to silly user stuff. So let me share my screen once again. And I'll show you what happened here. As I mentioned earlier, this is a pretty fresh brand new Windows box, and I've not really played with it a whole lot. And we have this lovely index.html, which we're going to be using is part of this uh, volume mount down here for the Podman site, sure, HTML. But what I had forgotten to do was when I created it, I created it using a text file, and it's really not named index.html. It is named index.html.txt. So I'm thinking that if we go ahead and get rid of this text right here, yes, we want to get rid of that. Thank you very much. That is looking a whole lot better. Now let's try running the web server again. And now I've gone ahead and removed the privilege like I had tried in the prior attempts. And let's see if this comes back happy at this point. I suspect it will. There's the web server. Let's go back to the web host and hit it a refresh. And there we go. Hello from Nginx from container on Windows. So our web server is up and running. Everything's happy there. Um, I've got to say that the work that Jason Green has done on this in Windows portion of the Podman client or the Windows client for Podman has just been remarkable. If you want to see the tutorial that I was following that Jason has put together, I'll put a link inside the video down below so it'll be easier to get to. But it's under Podman Docs Tutorials Podman for Windows. And he walks you through a, a whole lot of everything about this, including the installation, what happens with the WSL, which happens automatically now. Probably you had to do that by yourself, which was rather gross. How to start the machine, your first commands, dealing with ports, API forwarding, um, rootful versus rootless. As we saw, I went ahead and made it rootful for this instance. And then how to deal with volume mounting and the listing machines, how to use SSH, and how the WSL command can be of use for you. And then Windows terminal integration. And then finally, how to stop and remove the machines when you're done with it. And then some helpful troubleshooting advice as well. So it's really a phenomenal tutorial to look at. I hope you en if enjoyed this video and the blog that I'm going to be putting together with it. And have a great day. Thanks all.